Howdy, welcome to Broomtail Country. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you guys about the Paniolo Cowboys of Hawaii. So, without further ado, let's jump into the video. In 1794, the explorer George Vancouver brought the first cattle to Hawaii as a gift to King Kamehameha I. The king then put a kapu on the cattle, meaning that the islanders were forbidden from killing them and eating them. Around 10 years later, the king lifted his 10-year kapu on the cattle due to them tearing up the Hawaiian people's crops and he sought help from outside sources, particularly in Mexico. And so a Hawaiian ambassador was sent to Alta, California to recruit vaqueros. By 1832, the king of Hawaii had brought three vaqueros from California to Hawaii to teach and work. These colorful vaqueros established livelihoods beef catching on horseback. They taught the island men the Spanish method of ranching as practiced by the mission herders of California. These cultural emissaries from America's west coast were known as paniolos, from the Spanish word espanol. The Californians also shared their knowledge of horsemanship and the equestrian equipment required to work cattle. In 1840, a man named Francis Olmsted went to Hawaii and claimed there were men who wore ponchos, boots, spurs, pants split on the outside seam below the knee, and used lassos horseback. Clearly, the vaqueros of Alta California were making an impact. That was some history on early Hawaii. Now let's get into some modern day nitty gritty. So anyways, let's get down to the nitty gritty. How are cowboys on the islands different from cowboys on the mainland? Well, for one thing, we're insular. There's really no place to go with your calves but to sell them and have them leave the state, especially in modern ranching in the islands. In terms of, of lifestyle, Hawaii certainly is unique in that in a given day, a cowboy might be as much as a, a, a fisherman as he is a hunter, as he is a cowboy. The Paniolo cowboys also had to push their cattle into the ocean in order to get them onto boats from where the cattle would then be shipped off the island, either to surrounding islands or to the mainland. Now let's talk about the saddles Paniolos use every single day. Early Hawaiians were navigators first, cowboys later on. As they learned the art of saddle making, they related it to the parts of a canoe. Prince, the saddle horn up front on the big island is called an okumo. Okumo is the front piece of a canoe. Now on a canoe, you see a semi-round splashboard that's either at the front and or at the back of a canoe. Well, that half round piece is at the back of the saddle and that's called the cantle in English, or a poi, P-O-E in Hawaiian, that's what the canoe part is called. When you take the two bars that fit underneath those parts to rest on the horse, those are no different from an outrigger, which is an ama. The cowboys call the bars in yama, or iyama. Iyama would be the two bars. According to Dr. Billy Bergen, the Paniolo saddle is a Mexican hybrid type saddle. They made it lighter and slicker. They also made modifications that would allow the saddle to be used in a more tropical environment like that of Hawaii. They are known as the standard Hawaiian tree saddle. Crafting begins with the nenele ao, or wood from the shumak tree. It's a very strong but lightweight wood in which they take the fork of a tree and invert it, and by carving they become the fork and dally horn of a saddle. The next stage would be to, to finally finish that wood so it lays nicely. But the Hawaiian saddle is made from lighter materials than the typical Mexican saddle. The saddle seat is concave. It originated in the 1900s. The Nineliao tree is preferred. However, you can use tree from guava or absalom. And what the saddle makers do is they look for a fallen tree for what they need. Julio moku, mm -hmm. what we call on Maui, or um, avi avi, the braids. On Maui, these are braided by five mm -hmm. and flat. 
um, desktop Maui style. Bulldog, Tapadero Bulldogs. This pattern was copied from an Halekla ranch. Um, this old man Sakamoto used to make all the Tapaderos for the cowboys. From my research, I've found that each island has their own style of avi avi. Obviously, on Maui, they have what that cowboy said that they have. But on the big island, they will either range from four to five, or they could have three. On Kauai, there is no laces, they have no rawhide laces. So, the amount of avi avi that they're gonna have is honestly just dependent on who makes the saddle and what island you're on. The Paniolos of Hawaii are just another cowboy group that gets their roots from the Mexican vaqueros of old. Today on Hawaii, there are numerous ranches like the Parker Ranch, and there are rodeos held in remembrance of all of the traditions that the vaqueros brought over to Hawaii. Things Paniolo meant cowboy. It didn't necessarily mean that you were uh, ethnically Spanish or Mexican. Uh, you could be a Ch Japanese cowboy or Chinese cowboy, but you're still Paniolo. So it's a heritage that was centered around your profession and not necessarily your, your genetic makeup. There is so much that could be said about the Paniolos of Hawaii that I can't put it all into one video. And so look forward to future videos of Paniolos and thank you for making it all the way to the end. Make sure you like and subscribe. Have a great day and feel free to comment anything that you have to say. If you have any questions, concerns, let me know. Have a good day.